We've just celebrated Easter or Resurrection Sunday in which Jesus Christ rose from the dead. It was the final component of the atonement. Now, the beautiful thing about that is that it allows for each and every one of us to be resurrected again. But going through a loss of a loved one is challenging. And on this episode today, we're going to share with you some principles from the resurrection and also some insights that can help you as you're going through loss. Hey everyone, welcome to Changing. My name is Donald Kelly and I'm your host and I'm excited to be here with you today. As we just heard in the teaser today, we're going to be talking about resurrection, specifically five ways that we can deal with loss. Now, for many of us who've lost loved ones, everyone on who's watching this episode or interacting with us have lost someone at one point, whether it's a grandparent or a parent or a, a, a partner, a spouse, a loved one, or even a friend. With that loss comes a lot of pain. There comes challenges and difficulties, and sometimes it's hard to be able to go through those, especially if you're trying to cope and go through that on your own. There are many different resources that you can take advantage of, such as congregation, a local leader, a bishop or a pastor, or someone that can you can conf- confine in, a friend. I just want to make sure we can understand that there are places and resources and people out there that can help us. Most importantly, our Lord Jesus Christ, through prayer, can help us to go and cope through those losses. Now, today I'm going to give you five different ways that you can cope with loss, things that I have experienced and also friends and family members who are close to me who have lost loved ones. If this is your first time listening or watching one of our, to listen to this podcast or watching one of our videos, this podcast is simple. It's dedicated to helping individuals like you and me draw closer to Christ. Now, as we outline these principles in this episode today, if you feel the need to have a conversation with someone to get some help or get some guidance, feel free to reach out to me, donaldckelly09 at gmail.com. donaldckelly09 at gmail.com. I'll have that pop up here on the screen so you can see that. So let's go back in and dive into this, this idea here. You know, maybe you have a family member that passed away. We had a cousin, he was going back to school after Thanksgiving a few years ago, um, and about four four or five years ago now, but he was driving back to school um, in Tallahassee, which is about uh, five, six, maybe seven hours away from where we live um, right now, and he was um, just driving back, and it was late evening, and someone who was drunk, who was a drunk driver, went the opposite way on the highway and actually struck him and he died on the scene. It was very hard for our family. Um, It was very tough. One of the things that did help me was to know that he will live again, that he will be resurrected, that there is an afterlife, that Jesus is a Christ. And there's something I wanna read by uh, Russell M. Nelson. He said, death is a necessary component of our eternal existence. No one knows when it will come, but it is essential to God's great plan of happiness. Thanks to the atonement of our Lord, eventual resurrection is a reality and eternal life is a possibility for all mankind. For sorrowed loved ones left behind, the sting of death is soothed by a steadfastness, faith in Christ, a perfect brightness of hope, a love of God and of all men, and a deep desire to serve Him. That faith, that hope, that love will qualify us to come into God's holy presence and with our eternal companions and family dwell with him forever. I think that's a powerful statement, a quote from a leader, a, a prophet, in the sense that it, because it teaches us the, the idea of that hope, teaches us the idea of possibility, the love and the, the benefit of the atonement of Jesus Christ and what can and will happen to us. And it's, it's just comforting to hear that. Now, there's several things that I want to share with you that can help you out today as you're going through loss. The first one is to remember that this is not the end. So go back to the the note by Russell M. Nelson there. In John chapter 11, verse 25, I'll have the scripture pop up on the screen. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he was were dead, yet shall live. And in verse 26 says, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Now, I think that's interesting that whosoever liveth and believeth in Christ shall never die. Now, what does it mean to live and to believe? It means to follow him and believe in him, obviously, is to to know that he exists, to to have that, that even if you don't have strong faith, but to, to have that belief that he's there. Um, if you study the scriptures, if you learn about him, if you just believe in him and live according to that belief, 
that's that's good that's going to help you in the in in, in the end um, as it teaches us here so whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die the way that we know that is because we have life after death we have the possibility of hope we have the possibility of eternal life and if we truly believe in christ and live according to that he gives us that promise that we shall live with him forever death isn't the end death is just a a phase it's a it's one of the stages of our existence when i think about the fact uh, that jesus christ came to the earth and that he did die on a cross and that he was resurrected it gives me again for as it, as it gives me a, a, the assurance that that can happen to me if you remember the story as in the scriptures where christ was when christ was on a cross and he was in between the two thieves one of them said if you were the son of god why don't you go ahead and call on him and you know take deliver all of us from off the cross and then the other one said you know basically that's not the case we have to pay for our sins this guy is innocent and Christ turned to him and said, surely, you know, you shall be with me this day in paradise. Now, from that scripture, if you don't have a strong belief in God, or if you don't have a strong belief in Christ and a resurrection, you should at least have some kind of hope or an understanding that Christ is telling him that, yes, we are going to die, but today we'll be in paradise, meaning we'll be somewhere else. It's not that we are going to not exist anymore. And I know that part is hard for us because we can't see that loved one. We're separated from them through that veil. There are scriptures that teaches us that, you know, and sometimes you, people have had the opportunity to to feel the presence of their loved one or to see them. And, and I think all of that just gives back to that assurance that there's something, even if we don't necessarily understand, something there in the afterlife. There's more to this, more than just this life. I mean, think about it. We're on this planet for probably 88 years, maybe 90, live good 100 years, um, good healthy life. Um, but in, in, even in those cases, like just 100 years to exist, I don't think that's the case. I think we have a God as a, a, our, our Father in heaven, and, a, and we have a God that's capable to do all things and to uh, infinitely create a, anything and to just create us to exist for this short period of time. I don't think that's the case. I think there's a lot more to it. And I know that from the scriptures, but I testify to you going through at loss. I want you to remember that there's more to life than just this. And even if you're not a strong believer in Christ yet, just still have that hope. Lean on mine, lean on the words in the scriptures, my hope and lean on the words in the scriptures to know that there is a possibility of life and study the words of Christ, which goes to the next one. Point number two is to do that, to read the scriptures. Now, uh, family members that I've spoken to who have experienced loss as well, they said that that's one thing that helped them. And the reason is the scriptures are reassuring. There's one in the book of Alma, chapter 40, verse 11. Now concerning the state of the soul between death and the resurrection, behold, it has been made known unto me by an angel that the spirit of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, yea, the spirit of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. And then shall it come to pass that the spirit of those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all cares and sorrow. And finally, verse 13 says, And then shall it come to pass that the spirit of the wicked, yea, yea, who are evil, for behold, they have no part nor portion of the spirit of the Lord, for behold, they choose evil rather than, than good. Therefore, the spirit of the devil did enter into them and take possession of their house, and these shall be cast into out of darkness. There shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, and this because of their own inequity being led captive by the will of the devil. So in that, we see that in the afterlife, there's going to be an opportunity for us to be able to go back and be with God or to go into, go into out of darkness with those who deny Christ and to not follow him. But the principle, again, is that in the scriptures, we know for our loved ones, people who are, are you know, we care for, for the majority of us, they're going to be in an opportunity to be able to hear the gospel, be in a place of paradise, and to be able to go back and be with um, their father in, in, in heaven in the long run. The scriptures gives a lot of hope. It gives a lot of peace, especially I want to, I like this part here where it says, the righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise. There are many people who are kept from truth who don't know where to find it in this life. And it, 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 are those individuals automatically cast into outer darkness because they did not know Christ? No, they have the opportunity to learn of Christ. And that's a whole nother story for another day. And if you're interested in hearing a message about that, more than willing to connect with you, just go ahead and reach out to me on that. But the point here, the scriptures can give you the hope and give you the assurance and give you the peace that you need. Um, that there's opportunity for your per your loved ones to be able to live again.
and to enjoy happiness and peace. Third thing, time heals all things. I think this is another important concept to remember, and it's very difficult in the moment. When we lost our cousin right at that the day when the, the times, it was devastating. It was emotional. It was tough. Now, with time, you know, four or five years later, we, even though it still hurts, we understand where he's at, as well as we also have this, the time was able to heal. We have been able to mourn and to comfort. And there's nothing wrong with mourning. And actually, it's actually a pretty good thing. I, I want to read something again by Russell M. Nelson. He says, Irrespect, irrespective of age, we mourn for those loved and lost. Mourning is one of the deepest expressions of pure love. Moreover, we can't appreciate joyful reunions later without the tearful separations now. The only way to take sorrow out of death is to take love out of life. So we think about the loved ones that we've had. We think about the memories. We think about those experiences. We go back and and we reflect on their life. And when we would do those things, again, we mourn, but also we we take the joy, as it says. We look for the joy in the life, in their life to live. No one is perfect, and people make mistakes, and people do things that are, are not right at times. But for the most part, we are, your family members and loved ones are pretty good people, and they have some pretty good memories. Let's reflect and focus on those good memories that we have of those individuals. Let's reflect reflect on the the uh, the happy moments, the happy times. And those things can definitely help you as you're going through. Time definitely heals all things. And no matter no matter who you are, no matter what challenge you're going through, just keep that firm hope. Again, in the moment, it may be tough, but just know that time, you'll be able to heal. And mourning is an okay thing to do. It's, it's totally acceptable and doesn't mean anything is wrong. Um, sometimes people mourn longer, maybe mourn for years, and some mourn for days, some mourn for decades. Again, it's never easy to lose that loved one, but we must have that hope that we will see them again. There's a story by the uh, same Russell M., Russell M. Nelson. There's a gentleman that he was speaking with, and this gentleman uh, name is Mark, and Mark had a mother, his mom that was uh, uh, sick and was older and was, was going to pass away soon. And Russell M. Nelson knows this gentleman's mom. And he said, how's your mother? And he said, well, she's not doing so great. And then he said, well, tell her I look forward to see her again. Now, when the, uh, Mark, he was taken back for a second. He's like, Mark was from Australia. And he said, uh, New Zealand. And he's like, hey, when is the next time you're going to New Zealand to see her? And he's like, oh, no, I'm not talking. I'm not going to New Zealand anytime soon. He said, I'm going to see her in the next life. And that gave Mark the reassurance, again, that the spiritual leader was able to confirm with him, even in that, in, in that, in that strong confidence that he's going to see this person again, teaching that there is life after death. And, um, you know, I, I feel for many of us, sometimes we just need to get that from a, a third party, from someone else to help us to feel comfort. Now, Mark, obviously, he knew that he was going to see his mom again. But that from his spiritual leader, getting that note, that that uh, reassurance surely did strengthen him and help him as he was able to cope and go through that loss. Number four is to be with family and supportive loved ones. And there's nothing more beneficial than to be with others, mourning with those that mourn, strengthening those that um, that need strengthening and helping those with feeble knees. Um, we we hear this in the scriptures, and one of the th it's, it's, an, it's one thing to read it, but there's one thing to actually do it. When someone or a family member or people are going through tough times, just being there for them, or just you yourself who are going through that loss, being with others who can support you, can uplift you, who can help you, who can strengthen you. That. Um, I don't know, like they don't need to necessarily do anything at times. Just being there with you just helps so much. And uh, for many of us, we have those loved ones. And for those of us who don't have a lot of family members who are around or, you know, supportive friends, just know that you have others. And I talked about this at the beginning of the episode. You have your church brothers and sisters. You have um, you have friends who are listening to this podcast you can reach out to as well. And for, you have me and you have some of the missionaries who can come and share an uplifting message. People are there and people who are willing to come and to help you. One of the things that I find that uh, I see that folks do that mourn is that they lock themselves away. And I encourage you not to lock yourself away. Be with those that are in need. 
Now, I do want to also give a caveat as well. It is not bad to spend some time by yourself and to collect your thoughts or go for a walk or to, you know, meditate or to feast upon the word or to to, to have that alone time where you can go back into your memory. So a loved one, whether it's to read the books, uh, their journals or look at f- videos or pictures or just to remember them, that's okay. But when it gets to the point where you're falling into depression, we got to make sure we reach out and get help. There are uh, clinical uh, professionals that can help you as well as your spiritual friends and your family and loved ones. So don't be afraid of reaching out and asking for support, asking for help and being with people who can help you cope and go through those tough times. And finally, serve others. I talk about this one a lot. Going through tough moments is not easy. Sometimes though, after we've experienced, we've mourned for that person, we can go and help other people, whether that's through our jobs or through our church responsibility or through a charity or through a local organization, or just helping people in your neighborhood, being there to listen to someone or guiding and helping somebody else who's coping with loss. When we serve, we take we, we are doing something that the Savior Jesus Christ would do. You remember when Jesus Christ lost his cousin, John the Baptist, he he would he wanted to mourn and wanted to spend some time take time but he also went and served uh, folks and continued to do the mission and what he was uh, about now for each and every one of us may not be as strong as Christ in that situation but the principle is that serving other people can help us and when the time is appropriate when the time is right be sure to get out and go help other people the more that we can help other people and not focus on ourselves the more we the easier sometimes it will help us to be able to cope and to go through those tough times so those five things that I recommend you do share with you that can help you as you're coping with loss one remember that it's not the end death is not the end there's life after this life Two, study the scriptures because in them there's life. Three, time will heal all things. Number four, be with supportive family members and loved ones. And then number five, serve others. As you cope with loss and as you seek to try and test out these principles, I promise you, you'll receive greater joy and happiness and hope. I promise you, as you feast upon the words and as you cope and you, you seek Christ, he can help you to be able to go through all of these tough moments. There's nothing more reassuring than to than that, to know that Christ lived. All in all, all of these examples, all of these moments, they're helping you to draw closer to him, to seek him. And as you do so, again, he will help you and strengthen you to be able to go through these tough, challenging moments. I know God lives. I know Jesus is the Christ. And I know that he'll come again. I know that the resurrection is real. And there's a possibility for each and every one of us to have life after this life. I testify to you that he will come. And when he does, I want for you and I to be on his right-hand side. I share this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.